Well, the group stage game is now officially over. And we now know the 16 teams that will be going into the knockout stage. And today we have the last two teams that are looking to secure their tickets to the next round has been confirmed. And those two teams that, that made it, those two final teams that made it into the knockout stage, one of them did it in a historic way. So in both of these games, it ended 1-0. Uh, Senegal lost to Colombia 1-0, while Japan also lost to Poland 1-0. And Japan, in the end, was able to get through the next round over Senegal. And despite the fact that they had the same points, the same goal differential, the same amount of goal scored and goal conceded, and the same amount of wins, draw, and losses, and also in the head-to-head, -head, both of these teams tied at two, Japan made it through the next round because, for the first time ever, the fair play rule determined who exactly will be moving on into the next round. And for those of you that are not familiar with the fair play rule, basically it's a bit of a controversial show rule that determine the each team's yellow card accumulation and also red card accumulation. And the team that has the fewest amount of yellow cards will be moving on into the next round. And I think they also have like a point system where... If you get a yellow card in a game, then you get minus one point in terms of the fair play point system. And a red card, I think it's minus three. And because Japan only had four yellow cards in this entire tournament compared to six that Senegal had, Japan moves on into the next round. And what was kind of ironic with this fair play kind of, kind of tiebreaker that Japan actually won is that they didn't really look like they were were really playing very fairly in this game. I mean, if you look at the last seven or eight minutes of this Poland versus Japan match, and by the way, the only goal in that game was Beninac scoring in the 59th minute, but if you look at the final eight minutes of this game, yeah, that was not a good football kind of... Kind of stretch by any means of necessary i mean that was just one of the most boring last eight minutes of this game japan and poland basically they kind of accepted the fact that you know what we're just gonna pass the ball around side to side and just kind of like burn the clock something similar to what happened i think 34 years ago between germany and austria and i think uh if i remember germany won that game won nothing or was it Austria that won that one? It was one of them that won that game. And then after after uh, Germany scored that goal, basically both teams decided to just pass the ball around and not even attempt to try to, to shoot on goal. And that game was just so controversial and that it, it, was, it received so much criticism from the fan and certainly was the reason why... We have this simultaneous kind of goal kind of thing. That is exactly what they did. They changed the rules of how how after that, all games that is in the group stage is going to be having simultaneous game. Um, and it this from what we saw in the last eight minutes of this game, that was kind of like that where it was just some sideway passing so that they can kill off the clock so that they will basically move on into the next round and don't have to worry about anything. And in some way, it's a cruel thing to do. It's certainly a strategy that will upset a lot of people. But, you know, Japan, they know that they will move on if they don't concede another goal because of the fair play rule. And even though it doesn't sound like it's a fair play, it is what it is. And, you know, for Senegal, it is very unfortunate that they did go out of the fair play rule. And, really, I don't think Senegal played that poorly in this game against Colombia. It was Colombia that had to work really hard in this game to try to score a goal, which eventually they did with Mina scoring the goal in the 74th minute. And, you know, certainly, like I said, it's a bit heartbreaking that Senegal 
are now out of the tournament because of this fair play rule and because Senegal is knocking out of this tournament this will also be the first time ever in the FIFA World Cup that there is no African team that actually made it into the round of 16. Uh, this is the first time since they started to change the rule about about how the the pot system works in terms of the the draw. Uh, this will be the first time that there's no African team that made it into the quarter or not quarterfinal, but into the knockout stage. And it's very unfortunate because I thought if there is one team that I, one African team that I think will make it through into the knockout stage, I would say maybe Morocco or Senegal in this case. And you know, Morocco case was very unfortunate and so is Senegal with this case. But it is what it is. You know, this tournament has gave us a lot of big surprises and some historic moment. And this was just one of them. And the fair play rule was the other. But in terms of that, that is pretty much it for the, the confirmation of all 16 teams that will be into the knockout stage. Even though we still have like two more games after today's. I mean, these two games really didn't matter. Besides the fact that England and Belgium, it was a game where... It determined who exactly will finish first. And if you saw my preview yesterday and how I talked about why I kind of want England to lose this one. Because if you look at the bracket of the knockout stage, you will know that the upper bracket is so much tougher than the lower bracket. I mean, the upper bracket has teams like Brazil, France, um, Argentina... Portugal, Uruguay, and now Belgium in there. It is a really murderous kind of kind of bracket for England to go through if they win the group. I mean, they will get a much easier opponent in the round of 16, that is Japan, if they would have won this game against Belgium. But still, I would rather face a much tougher opponent in the round of 16 which it turns out we we're going to be facing against Colombia and oh and I didn't actually mention this so despite the fact that Colombia did win this game um it kind of can come with a big cost and the reason why I said that it comes with a big cost is because James Rodriguez got injured in this game and he got sucked off in the second half of this game and I'll tell you what, there has to be a lot of concerning faces and a lot of Colombian fans are holding their breath. Because if James Rodriguez can't go in the next game against England, this is a huge blow to Colombia. James Rodriguez is literally the heart and soul of that team. He is like the Mr. Colombia for them and the Mr. World Cup for them. And if they miss him and if they, they will not have him for the round of 16 then this will be a massive massive blow for them but at the same time it's going to be a massive break for England too because now with Colombia without James Rodriguez that will be that will be definitely make the matchup much easier against Colombia and certainly that is a matchup that that England could definitely moving on into the next round and what I mean Definitely, I hope that we actually move on. I really don't want us to have yet another moment of where we just face against a smaller team and then it turns out that we completely bowl it because that was when the biggest stage happened. But we're going to find out how that is going to be the case when we get into the round of 16 game. Um, and that round of 16 game is actually one of the last one. It actually happens on Tuesday. So let's just pray that England, of course, can beat Colombia in that round of 16. And, you know, talking about this game, and this is actually the only game that I actually watch. I forgot to even mention in the beginning of this video that I did not even watch these other free matches because I have a lot of videos that I have to upload today. So just going to try to do this as quick as possible. 
Um, but in this game, yeah, it was not a fun game to watch. And whether you're a neutral fan or an England fan like myself, or you're a Belgium fan, this was a game where it felt like you want to really lose this game. You don't want your team to win this game because if they win, they top the group and they have to f go into that top upper bracket. Uh, and in many ways, this game kind of reminds me of an NFL game when you have two very bad teams facing at each other and that both teams does not want to win because if one of the team win that means that they will go lower in terms of the draft order and the losing team will get a higher draft pick that is exactly what this game is kind of like so because of that there was a lot of boring sideway passing not a lot of not a lot of chances in this game whatsoever there wasn't really a lot of kind of attack by both of these teams and both of these teams also feel pretty much their b squad I mean, guys like Rashford, Vardy were up front in this game for England. And they're not everyday starters. And for Belgium, they didn't have Lukaku, De Boina, and also uh, Eden Hazard in this game. They did have his brother Forgan Hazard for this game. But Eden Hazard was not part of this game. And Michi Bashuawi was also at this game. And can we just say that he probably have just won the award of the biggest fail of this World Cup and probably the funniest moment in this World Cup. So what happened to Bashuari is, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already saw this moment, is that once Yanazai eventually put that goal in the 51st minute, which was a very wonderful goal by Yanazai, who basically hits it on his left foot and curled it into the back of the net. Well, he goes swirling in and go in for a celebration with his teammate. Michi Bashori basically decided to grab the ball and he basically tried to smash the ball into the back of the net because usually when you see a goal score, usually there's a, there's a teammate that didn't score the goal but they want to just pretend that they scored a goal so that they just picked up the ball and tried to smash it into the net. Well, Bashori did exactly the same thing but the only problem is, is that when he grabbed the ball, he basically was intended to kick it into the net but instead he kicked it in the bar and basically that ball ricocheted off the bar and just hits his face i mean that was that was probably the most most hilarious and probably that was the moment that i think we will always remember from this game because let's face it this game was absolutely boring. There was nothing really to talk about. It was a game that both teams did not want to win because of circumstances. And yeah, that that was just such a hilarious moment. And, you know, cer certainly I hope he's all right from that. I'm pretty sure he's, he's okay. He actually was able to continue to play. And it's also another reason why I'm really hoping that we keep Michi Bashuawi. I hope we don't send him out on loan again like we have already done with him to Borussia Dortmund in in the winter transfer window and yeah but in term like I said in terms of this game in some way this is good news for England because now we are going to be playing in the lower bracket which is an easier route to go into the semi-final and the only team that we're going to have to face in the semi-final that could give us a bit of trouble could be Spain but other than that I think we sh if we take care of business against the lower team then I think we should be able to we should be able to move on and go deep in this tournament let's just hope fingers crossed okay fingers crossed but yeah next up um well for the last game of the World Cup Cup group stage to talk about uh, I'm not gonna really mention a lot about this game because I didn't watch this game or watch the highlights but basically Tunisia won 2-1 uh, Panama of course scored first uh, it was actually an own goal by Morao which I think this is the 11th own goal so far which is now a record 
in the World Cup. Well, actually, the record was broken yesterday with the 10th own goal in this tournament. But Ben Yasef scored a goal in the 51st minute and Kazari scored in the 66th for the comeback to be completed for Tunisia and for them to, to take the lead. And that is pretty much that. As Tunisia able to get all three points, they are able to walk out the tournament on a high. And certainly for Panama, he, you know, it wasn't a good World Cup. You know, they didn't get any point, but they at least did score two goals. And at least I'm happy the fact that now we're going to get Anibal Godoy and Howard Cummins back into the squad. Oh my goodness, who am I kidding? Why the heck did I really want Godoy and Cummins back in the the Quake squad. I mean, they were absolutely horrible in the World Cup. And I am hoping that maybe in the summer or in the winter, we can finally sell Godoy or just get rid of him because he is, like he's been throughout this season for the Quakes, he was utterly useless in that Panamanian national team in this World Cup. But either way, that is pretty much it for all the group stage game. Uh, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this game these games and also I will be doing my prediction for the for the the knockout stage and I'll do pretty much the prediction for the round of 16 the round of eight the semifinal and then into the final so basically I'm gonna fill out the bracket I'm gonna have like the bracket on the board and I'm gonna like filled out and who exactly I think is going to win the World Cup and I might be changing my mind a little bit about who actually will win the World Cup because originally I actually said that I, I predict Brazil was going to win this World Cup but I might change my mind after this but either way guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button and yeah I will see you guys next time